Hi, everyone. Welcome to Wine.com Experiences. I'm Gwendolyn Osborne. We are so excited to have you here today joining us. We are tasting and talking about two wines from Invivo XSJP and talking to the two founders of Invivo and the name behind the wine, Sarah Jessica Parker. For those of you who submitted questions beforehand, thank you. There were some really good ones and we've kind of incorporated those through our conversation today. So hopefully we will get all of them answered for you. If you purchase the wines ahead of time, um, please go ahead and get those open, find some glassware. We are tasting both of the wines today. If you only wanna open one, that's fine. Uh, this video will live on on the wine.com YouTube channel. So you can always revisit it with whatever you don't get to today. Um, if, uh, well, actually the two wines we're tasting today are the Invivo SJP Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand and the Invivo X SJP Rosé from the south of France. If you're looking for more detailed wine tasting notes, uh, you can find those on wine.com, the, uh, the page where this, these two wines are being sold. We have a great downloadable PDF with lots more detailed information. Okay, so let us introduce our guests. Joining us from New Zealand, we have the founders of Invivo, Tim Lightborn and Rob Cameron. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good morning from New Zealand. Yes, good morning. Yes, right. It's morning in New Zealand. So that's fantastic. Welcome. Hey, how, how are you going? You're doing well. Great to see you both. Uh, we are also going to welcome stateside uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Hello, Sarah Jessica. Welcome. Um, it is fantastic to have all three of you here. I really appreciate you all taking the time to be here, to talk to us. Um, so let's, let's get started. Uh, I really want to kind of dive into the story behind the wine. Um, Sarah Jessica, I'd like to start with you. I understand that Tim and Rob approached you about this project. So I want to know kind of what inspired you to say, yes, yeah, sure, I totally want to have a wine with my name on it and start a label. Also, before you start there, I think you're, um, there's, I think you might have to unmute yourself there. Um, mute. There you go. Perfect. I'm sorry about that. Hi. No, okay. Did you not hear my greeting? Did you miss what was your my greeting? greeting? I just said hello and thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> we, are, we are just grateful for your time um, to be able to talk about this. But yes, so you have two, you know, Tim and Rob say, hey, why don't you start a wine, you know? <laughs> um, so what was the inspiration um, to say yes? Well, um, when, I, when I received the call, I thought it w was absurd. I mean, I had no, no business even entertaining um, you know, messing around in the, in, in, in the wine trade. Um, I, my husband and I are consumers and we love wine and we drink wine and we don't have a, an important wine collection, but we've always enjoyed it. And I think the more I've traveled in the world, the more, um, the, the more exposure I've had to local wines and um, wines from different regions. Um, my, my love for, for wine has grown, of course. Um, but so as absurd as I thought it was, I, I, I certainly wanted to meet the two gentlemen who were bold enough to even ponder the idea. Um, so we had a, a, a lovely conversation. And as with many things that I've um, been asked to participate in, initially thinking that I you know, had no business or wasn't equipped, um, they convinced me that A, they would share all the information they possessed, that their experience and years working in the wine industry, they would be generous with and be willing um, to let me learn, which is something that I love doing. And, um, and, and that I could ask questions and be wrong and, um, you know, be inspired and informed. And it's just been an extraordinary, um, unexpected, lovely, um, delicious experience. It's been such a treat. And, and I have grown to be so fond of, of Tim and Rob and the way they run their business, the way they conduct their business and their relationships with, um, you know, with merchants all over the globe. And um, it's just been a really extraordinary, unexpected um, experience. 
Well, we are thrilled that you are doing it. Um, Tim, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Tim, why, what, what made you, what was it about Sarah Jessica that stood out as an ideal partner? Sure. So we, we spent about 12 months um, looking for the ideal partner in the US. We wanted someone, you know, that would be hands on, uh, would help us in the creative process, but also, uh, also love wine. Um, and from her side, we, she was willing to take a chance on us, you know, two guys, uh, bottom of the world in New Zealand, funny accent. And so we wanted someone <laughs> that would, you know, give us a shot, right? So she's been amazing, right? In the whole creative process, working on the label, um, you know, I sat in there and presented different sort of concepts and it was great just working with her there, but also in the blending process as well, um, working with Rob, not always agreeing with the samples that were presenting to her, which, which was exactly what we wanted from her. Um, also, you know, when we send her the new wines, you know, the feedback that we get, it, it's, it's fantastic, it's exciting, but also um, our customers, right, not just in the US, but around the world in Canada, Ireland, UK, here in New Zealand, Australia, Japan, you know, when we told them we're, we're making this wine, we're collaborating with Sarah Jessica, there was so much excitement. So she's been a, a really good partner for us. I should say I left out, I left out a very important detail, which was um, once I had a conversation with, um, with Tim and Rob, um, I realized that I had been a, um, I had been a customer of the Invivo brand um, and just wasn't putting together um, in Ireland, it's a it's a wine that we buy all the time. Our local um, grocery store, Super Value, um, sells wine. I mean, that's how you buy wine in Ireland is you know through your local grocery store. And so my husband and I had been buying in Vivo wine. Um, so it 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 felt um, it 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 felt as if I you know there was a natural already affection for the brand, which you know made me feel better that I was already a, a sold customer. Um, and, and we really love the wine. I mean, we go back and we go back and back for the wine, which I don't know if there's perhaps too much about how much wine we're consuming. <laughs> no, I think it, it, it establishes but we share the trust. Pages. Yeah, it establishes yeah. the trust that you had in this in this one um, yeah. wine brand, which is fantastic. And yeah. um, so Tim, in Vivo had been around before, obviously, because Sarah Jessica was drinking it. Um, so um, how did you guys meet up and get it going, you and Rob? So Rob and I have been mates since we were at school, so we, so we grew up together. Um, Rob went and off and studied winemaking, and I went into marketing. And it was about 2006 that we, um, we caught up in Europe. Rob was making wine across a number of countries in Europe, um, and I was working in London. And we actually caught up in a pub uh, and, and had a few glasses of wine and, and started talking about you know, relocating back to New Zealand and could we launch our own winery. Um, so I guess unlike many ideas with friends and a few drinks <laughs> we actually followed through with this one and in 2008 we launched our first wine which was a Sauvignon Blanc so really really hard it still is hard yards out there but at the start you know we were out hand selling it ourselves Rob was using other people's gear to, to make our own wines um, we were literally operating out of an apartment hand selling to shops all around New Zealand just to take our wine um, tasting getting those sort of sell through so you know, really, really hard yards and, and built it up to, to what it is today. So we sell to about 16 countries around the world. We, we moved into one of the oldest wineries in, in New Zealand in Te Kaufara, which we now run. Um, and we have Sarah Jessica on board. That's, yes, which is fantastic. I'm not sure what that does for the brand, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, ride it's good, their it's good. <laughs> um, Rob, what does Invivo mean? I, we had a lot of people asking what Invivo stands for. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a funny one. When Tim and I were like sitting down trying to work out what are we going to call ourselves and, you know, trying to, what's our vision for this, this wine brand? We want it to be global. Uh, we want it to sort of, I suppose, convey a meaning of what we felt really passionate about, which is wine's about sharing. Um, you know, having living in Europe for quite a few years uh, and sort of comparing it to sort of New Zealand culture, um, I really loved how the wine was part of the table, was part of family life and sharing experiences. So we wanted to sort of convey that a little bit. So in vivo, it means in life. And, you know, for me and for many of us, our maximum happiness is with the people that we love around us, some great food and a great glass of wine. And, you know, we're all pretty content. So that's kind of that, the in vivo, in life, in the living, in the now. And that's exactly what we're about. That's perfect. And Sarah Jessica, you added the XSJP. What was the idea behind behind that? Well, uh, I must confess that I can't recall now. If um, <laughs> I, I'm sort of, I, I'm inclined to believe that that it was a that it was a Tim um, idea. I sign all my, 
I sign all my mail, whether it's handwritten or emails, X comma SJP. And, um, and I think Tim, was it your, was it your idea to yeah. use? I think it was right. Yeah. He's in marketing. Yeah, so we, He's in marketing. <laughs> I mean, so we, uh, we felt that there was probably enough hills, river, lakes, or mountains on wine labels. <laughs> uh, so um, we obviously the collaboration symbol globally is, is an X. So that was interesting for us as the collaboration. But also we, did, we just noticed on Sarah Jessica's Instagram and when she's writing emails to us and things, there's an X. And then she adds the little comma there as well. Um, and she actually hand painted the X, which you see on the label as well. It was a teal. It's my finger. <laughs> Tell me about uh, the color. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's a story yeah, so, behind the color. So it started, um, my colleague Alyssa and I, once they presented us with, they presented us with obviously more than one idea for the label and we were gobsmacked by uh, by this particular one, obviously for sentimental reasons and its connection to the company already. Um, so um, we went out and bought a small can of teal colored paint and I spent, I would say a good hour or more just with various digits Working because I really wanted it to be my own hand if I could yeah. find a way. And I knew if I could offer a version of something that Tim is so clever and Tim and Rob have such a good sensibility about a aesthetics and labels and what's important and you know what might distinguish yet in a, in a busy, very well stocked wine store or spirits and wine. Um, so we did, we, I did a bunch of them and, and it was much harder than I thought because it was a, it was a nice thick, I believe it was an acrylic and it kept, it, it kept drying out. So, so this is where we landed and um, they put it to work and it's, um, it's nice also because it's dimensional, you know, it's not flat. So you can, you can feel the paint. Um, so that's the story. And teal is my favorite color. And, um, and it seemed to um, sort of, dirtying up this beautiful bottle. It seemed to sort of suit the Sauvignon Blanc. It just, I don't know, it, you know, you, you sort of, or at least I do um, partner colors with tastes, you know, and feelings and um, ideas. And, you know, you would say a Chardonnay might be a super, a much more concentrated color. And, you know, I don't know, I'm probably wrong, but I think it comes from working in fragrance for so long. Um, but teal, they were hospitable to the teal, which was very nice of them. And it just seemed to suit it. And then they they sort of they sorted out all the other stuff because that's what they do so well. <laughs> well, I love I love the color. I think it's I think it's stunning. I and I think you do. I mean, you have an eye and a talent for accessories and fashion and all those sorts of things. So I think that you were well suited to do that, and there was no wrong about it. It's perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, that's very cool about the design. So I wanted to start talking about the wine. So your first wine is a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Were you yes. already a lover of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc? I know you've partnered up with two New Zealanders. Yes. So, um, so I'm, not going to, I'm not going to pretend to be anything that I haven't been. Um, and I shared this with, with Tim and Rob when I met them, but I, I wasn't um, really a Sauvignon Blanc drinker. I have a bunch of friends that always order it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was strangely, and I'm not certain if this makes sense to, you know, wine aficionados or those that spent a lot of time and have, you know, a wine collection that's meaningful, but I was sort of intimidated by Sauvignon Blanc. It seemed a far more complicated affair to me than a Chardonnay, which sort of, I always thought it presented itself very simply, it, 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 a, a Chardonnay, you know, that I understood it immediately and that it wasn't asking too much of me. It wasn't asking me to be, you know, someone who consumed a more rarefied wine or that it was a table wine that I could order with some phony authority. Do you know what I mean? So Sauvignon Blanc seemed like, oh, it's this more complicated relationship and your palate has to somehow um, be more discerning. And of course they, you know, disavowed me of all of that. They were like, no, 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 no. You just, you haven't, you haven't committed to the relationship. <laughs> you know, you haven't really. It's about commitment. Me. Yes. I, I kind of think it is. I mean, with any wine and varieties, you know, I think a lot of us get stuck, especially those of us who aren't, you know, working in the trade or just haven't made it our business to really sort of invest in the wine relationship. Um, but I've, I've, 
I think, well, not I think, I've fallen in love with Sauvignon Blanc and I think it's a much more, um, I feel like it's a much more hospitable species than I understood it to be. And 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 though you want to play by the rules and, and live by the name, it's a much more, um, it has much more elasticity to it mm -hmm. than you think, you know, meaning like it doesn't have to fit, there is, isn't criteria that it must live by it, it has to be familiar. You have to be deserving of being called <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc, but there is room in there and there's flexibility. And that I learned just because Rob was willing to talk to me and teach me and, and, and share information and, and, and kind of really deconstruct what Sauvignon Blanc is. And now I'm absolutely mad for it. Hooked, yes. So tell I really us about am. the style. Yeah, no, this is, it's a beautiful <laughs> wine. So the style, like were you thinking of a specific style to go so, for on this wine when you were kind of, you know, after knowing a little bit about something along, you know, saying, Rob, we're going to make this wine. Here's what I'm looking for. Did you have that sort of idea? So I, I think after having tasted a bunch and really spent time talking about it, I think, well, what I first, first of all, recognized was there's no need for another one, right? So we better be deserving and worthy of anyone's time and attention and dollars like what makes us necessary with all there is in the world and all the great Sauvignon Blanc, what, you know, how do we distinguish ourselves and what can I do even as much of a novice as I am with two experts, you know, as counsel, what can I do? And what I started sharing with Rob at first, I was timid, but I was like, is there a way Rob can probably convey this conversation, but I was like, is there a way to make her bigger, a little bit bigger, but still stay within you know, an understanding of what a Sauvignon Blanc is and how do we bring in, you know, a certain idea of a fruit, but not be cloying or insipid or too beggish. You know, you don't want to be sugary and juvenile, you know, but I wondered if I could make her bigger. Rob, is this how you recall it? Yeah, Rob, what? <laughs> I honestly, Sarah Jessica, I, I'm loving your wine terms. These are ones that I don't always use, but I think they're really, they are totally relatable though. I, I think it's, Great. Um, Rob, am I, am I, have I com completely made up this conversation or is that how you would call it? <laughs> it was uh, a hugely fun experience and it's all coming, <laughs> it's all coming straight back to me. I mean, <laughs> the way you were describing the wine and the way you talk about wine, it's, it's a living thing. And I love that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, we, we remember when we met before Christmas a couple of years ago and we tasted some wines and kind of went through the styles that you liked and part of the reason you didn't, weren't so keen on Sauvignon Blanc is some of the wines you'd had before were kind of very fresh, very acidic, very bright, but maybe lacking a little bit of that power, that texture, that elegance. So um, that was the great brief that you gave me to go and build some components that we could then put a blend together. And Sarah Jessica was 100% the director of that movie for sure. Um, and it was such a fun experience. <laughs> For better or worse. Well, let's <laughs> let's taste the wine and maybe Robbie can kind of talk yes, us through let's. like the component. Yes, it's, it's it's a really hot day here. So <laughs> um so yeah, kind of talk us through, you know, how you incorporated those those notes into this wine and what we should be tasting. So I mean, you know, with any wine, you have to respect where it comes from. So it's still gonna be screaming of Marlborough, it's still gonna have massive amounts of citrus and tropical fruits and be bursting with fruit. Uh, but you can, you know, you can, there's an element of the whole terroir process, which is very much down to human hands. And that's, that's a little bit of magic that Sarah Jessica put into this blend, which is her style, her, her sway on it, which we think is such a fun thing. I mean, we're not living in America. We're not living and, and eating what you, you guys do. How, how fitting is it to have somebody in your country help us design a wine that's going to be maybe a little bit more tailored to your palates? Um, and that's very much what, you know, Tim and I, sort of founded our business on. It's not all about us. It's actually about bringing our consumers and people into the actual process. Um, just to go back to the, the, the structure, the texture, what makes this wine a little bit different um, and some of the things we tried differently in the winery. Sauvignon Blanc in texture is a really, maybe a little more challenging, whereas Chardonnay is much softer, much bigger, much bolder. And that's, you know, Sarah Jessica always, you know, really loved that style of wine. So. We went back to the winery and thought, well, what can we do to kind of get some more of that texture into a Sauvignon Blanc? Not make it a Chardonnay and not take away the Sauvignon Blanc factor, but just increase that palate weight and that texture. And if I can be a little bit wine geeky here for a minute, um, we did some things we don't normally do with white wines or with Sauvignon Blanc, um, which really helped this wine. So we kept the, the grapes after they were harvested, 
we kept them on their skins for up to eight hours, which is quite an unusual thing to do for white wine. Normally that's a red wine or a rosé sort of concept. And that ex sort of extracted some more phenolics from the wine, which has helped build the texture. Um, from then, we also uh, added some pieces of untoasted oak to some of the ferments. And so it didn't add oak character, but it did give a lot of texture. And then, of course, we left it on its lees, which is the dead yeast, after the fermentation, and we really, you know, left a long time, we stirred it up, and that also helps to sort of combine and create this sort of wonderfully seamless textural wine, uh, but still retain all the fruit and all the excitement of, of Sauvignon Blanc. So hopefully that's what people are getting at home. I, I, um, I, lo I love listening to Rob talk about um, <laughs> wine in general. I love it. I, I think, um, like in layman terms, I think it's, it's, um, it's not high and pointy. Does that make sense to you? It's not, um, it's not like um, angular. It's not variety. angular. It's yeah. not like a gladiola. Right. You know what I mean? It's a bigger, it's a, she, she's just a slightly bigger. She's not pointy or high, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, which I really liked because it's still, um, it stills playing by the rules. And it was so uh, exciting to me that Rob, like I said, just shared a lot of information and over a, a nice amount of time. So you're not just, it's not just a crash course, you're absorbing information every time we meet and talk, but that he um, was also excited about, you know, kind of moving the goalpost a little bit, but staying true and, and honoring what a Sauvignon Blanc is, which is obviously beyond my abilities. Um, yeah, it's been such, so, so interesting and, and, um, She's been so, it's been so nice. She's been so re well received and she's won awards. <laughs> and um, it's been so nice. It's delicious, so it does, but it does, it keeps so that, it keeps that typical Sauvignon Blanc character. You know, it's not overpowered by the little extras that you put into it, but kind of, it rounds it out. It rounds it out, yeah. To it that yeah. Is really I just, can I just say, uh, it, it wasn't always plain sailing though, was it Sarah Jessica, because, <laughs> I kind of really like some of the some of the components, and yes. you really didn't. We disagreed. <laughs> we, and but um, it, yeah, it, that was a, an amazing thing. And I, I think I mentioned to you that there was one particular kind of aroma that you really didn't like, and it's this really passion fruit papaya aroma. So we're not really getting a lot of that in this wine because of that. And you know, for the layman at home, this particular chemical compound. I mean, it, it's detectable down to parts of a billion. So, you know, something that Sarah Jessica's nose is so attuned to, you didn't like, so we took it out of the blend. I personally loved it. And, you know, we try to put some of that in our wines, but this was your blend and it was a really good fun, kind of a little bit of creative tension there, which I think was- No, it's so nice, but you were always so gentle about it. You were never, you never seem offended. I mean, we didn't, there wasn't fisticuffs or anything. Like it didn't, we didn't bust out in, you know, it was like a really good uh, sword play. Yeah. Um, but, but there is, um, you know, he left a bit of, you know, cause I kept asking, I was like, is there a way, I remember asking about like an apricot, like I, I don't mind a round. Um, we spent some time figuring out what is, what is the, the fruit that we are, that we want to have be part of this. Also just because I think people have expectations and you shouldn't be mercenary and just meet them because they have them. But if there's a way that it's likable also, I think it's nice to, to consider what people respond to and, and why, and if that's something we both wanted as well, or could imagine doing with your name on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. A, it's a beautiful wine. Um, and I love it because it does, like I said, it just speaks. It says New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, but it also says, oh, there's a little, a little creativity here. So I, I, just, I really enjoy it. But then oh, you make the successful Rose. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, and then you say, what next? And somehow we hop over to France with Rosé. So <laughs> um, whose idea, why Rosé, south of France, whose idea? Um, Tim, do you want to start this or Rob? Who wants to answer? Probably, probably to... Rob's experience yeah. working in France, he'll, he'll run yeah. you through it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, we've noticed the, the rise of Rosé globally for, for some time now. And, you know, we, we love Rosé. We make a lot of Rosé in New Zealand. Um, and we make great Rosé here, but the ultimate um, for me and for many is, is France. And having 
you know, lived and worked in the south of France um, a long time ago now, it just really stayed with me, the kind of uniqueness of the, of the terroir there, the soils and, and the climate and, and the varieties and the way they make their wine. So we thought it was a great place to, 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 to build a rosé. And then, you know, talking to Sarah Jessica, I think, you know, you're obviously very familiar with the area as well. You've been there, love the wines. Um, and we thought this is a, a good opportunity to replicate that blending process where we can really get your input into the wine and, you know, have your you know, signature Sarah Jessica style. And so, so Sarah Jessica, um, I know you were, you were kind of more involved in the blending in this or not more, but just maybe coming in with a little bit more confidence into blending this wine or maybe not. I don't yeah, know. I mean, but. I mean, confidence, confidence isn't something I naturally walk around with. As, I mean, especially relative to a business like this, but I think the difference was we, you know, we spent as much time, um, and as much attention and the detail remains as critical to me as always in all the work that I do. But I think the difference was I had a, I was more familiar with Rosé, unlike Sauvignon Blanc, I, I just knew it slightly better. And therefore, um, I think I, I was more, I, I, I started in a different place place like I you had a little handicap. Like, like in the in the race I was like further along by ten, maybe 10 yards only because I could speak about it already and 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 we do like many people enjoy rosé in the summer and because I've I, I've traveled and 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 a huge part of you know one of the many reasons I've traveled is just so I can eat and drink food in other places far away and as local as I can get I oh I'm, I prefer you know uh, just a table wine in in the south of France with no label and it's just from one little village or town it's just like I, I, I live for it you know um, so I knew where I kind of wanted to be but once again the question was why with so much great rosé in the world and because it's such a huge growing ever ever growing you know part of the wine business what makes us deserving worthy how do we stand out what makes it different and um and i think once again and and you know maybe this is sort of um like my problem or not but you know um i did once again i didn't want a super thin rosé i didn't want um I didn't want I, I didn't want something that was uber sophisticated, so complicated that it was like better than the drinker. Do you know what I mean? I wanted a table wine that people understood, but that had. I spoke to this gentleman the other day, and I was like, "Oh, I wish those were my words." I was like, "He said it's ex exuberant, exuberant and complex," and I was like, "Yes, exuberant and complex. It just has a slightly different to me." It's got this slightly different, almost a teeny bit of age on it, but obviously it doesn't have a lot of age on it. Um, Rob, remember we talked about, I was like, oh, this is gonna turn off people. I should very not say this probably, but um, I, I like when I can taste a little bit of age on something like with a good cheese, you know, it's like, I'm not gonna say I wanna, I wanna eat mold, but you know, when you can smell a little bit of something on something, do you know what I mean by that, Gwendolyn? You're looking at me like I'm an absolute yeah. no, no, banana. No, no. In, in wine, we sometimes call that like, we call it sometimes tertiary, which means yeah. like something that didn't just come from the fruit or the fermentation. It's like yeah. a hint of spice, that hint of earth, that hint of something under there, you know? And yeah, yeah, it's got, I can't, I can't describe it, but Rob and I went back and forth about this, Rob, right? In December, I was like, what is it? It's good. Don't take it away. Oh, wait, that's a, a peculiar smell. We don't want that much. I, I, we went back and forth about this because I think it's, to me, slightly more like not a teenager, you know, like somebody yeah. who's had been out in the world a little bit like this wine <laughs> feels to me like it's it's not better than you, but it's not just left home. Okay, I like, there's a maturity to it. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's a maturity to it. Yes. Um, Rob, how I'm did so you bad at this, it? sorry. No, no, no. Rob, how did you take this this guidance and what she wanted in the blend and uh, you will, let's taste it. Everybody should be drinking this at home. Yeah, but I love it. I love you talk us through that day. tasting profile. Well, you know, again, the, the brief was how do we get as much texture into this rosé as possible, mm. as much body, I love it. as much feeling. Um, and so, you know, the samples, we had really aromatic samples. We had some of the samples with that really kind of 
passion fruit thing, which, you know, we've established is not going to work in any of these wines. Um, and then, you know, from some of the vineyards a little bit in the further northern part of Provence on those clay soils tend to produce, you know, a little bit heavier style, but more Cinso dominant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the, that, that Cinso uh, Grenache Syrah blend, which, which this is, um, sometimes there is a little bit of, you know, we call animal or something a little bit funky going on in there. And I think that's what Sarah Jessica was, was talking, was referring to. You don't want to remove all of that kind of little bit of something there because it adds to the, the excitement, adds to the, to the complexity and gives it's you like, something a little bit to focus on. Yeah. It's a little bit of the earth is still there or something. It's like not so cleaned and showered that all of its personality is like, it's gone. It, there's, there's some earth in there somewhere that's really nice. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to. You don't want it to taste like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. Exactly. Correct. I yeah. don't. And and if you do, that's perfectly all right. And I that's okay. Like I'm I'm a fan of watermelon Jolly Ranchers, <laughs> but I also enjoy the complexity and layers that come through. Uh, yeah. With this, as it's well. also very. We, we talked a lot. It's also a very pretty color, which I know is slightly superficial and maybe not entirely material to the entire experience, but it's very pretty. And I think we really, we really respond to color with rosé and some people like, you know, a, a more washed out, you know, not so saturated, concentrated color. But I feel like Rob got this to such a nice place. It looks, I think more red than it. I don't know how accurate this lighting is, but, um, <laughs> but I love the color of it. And I once again, love the label and what they did. And that is all, all yeah. Rob and Tim. Well, that, but I, I know that you also were talking earlier and I loved what you said just briefly before we got on of just how happy you were with this blend because, you know, the, you, you kind of decide the blend and then they, they go home and they bottle it and everything and they send it yeah. to you and you're sitting there with that bottle and you think. Anyway. It's so scary. I was saying <laughs> earlier, it's, it, it, it's so nervous making because yes, we sit in December or this, whenever it is. And, and then Rob and Tim go back and there's a process, there's temperature, there's travel, there's all these things that play a part in, you know, what ultimately you experience when you open a bottle of wine and some of it's intentional and some of it's probably beyond our control is, you know, so I, I was saying earlier that it reminded, it reminds me of um, getting a script from someone, you know, from a writer you admire and you're terrified you're terrified to read it because you want so much to like it. It's so much more pleasant and easy when you are just swept away rather than coming back with notes and adjustments. And this is, you know, pretty much the process is done. You know, there's not much to do by the time I get the bottle in this condition. And I was so, once again, so relieved, but not just relieved because that sounds like a perfectly fine place to be. I wanted to be transported. You know, I want to love this because it's important when I talk about it that I say it authentically and I, you know, I want to drink this wine. And I was just, I said to them the other day, I was just like, oh, I'm so grateful for the professional hands involved because I'm just, I'm crazy about it. I'm, and my husband loves it. And I sent a bottle over to my friend and he's rather snobbish. And um, anyway, he was, he was so happy. It's, I'm, I'm just tickled with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm can I, just, can I just add, Gwendolyn, once we send that bottle to Sarah Jessica on the carrier, I'm not sure Rob and I get much sleep until we hear <laughs> from her. <laughs> it's fairly nervous times uh, for ourselves once we get the feedback, but, you know, both occasions, it's been, it's been awesome um, from her, which is great. Yeah, and uh, so Sarah Jessica, I know you're, I mean, you're such a talented artist, and I know you have attention to detail, you produce, you actually have done many things and always made sure whatever your name goes on you are proud of and there are some celebrities who invest or produce wines and just put it out there so i like that um you know obviously it's always great to meet somebody who's just been so much more involved and in saying okay if my name's on it i'm going in i'm going to have a say i want to be proud of it i want to drink it obviously is a big one but yeah. do you have anything that was your favorite part of this project or do you just love it all um i think in all sincerity i think having time with Tim and Rob um, being so welcomed into their business and having an opportunity to learn something that people spend years and years and their entire adult professional lives, you know, working in a business that's complicated and competitive and, 
you know, scary and uncertain. And I've been, you know, welcomed into their business, which is, you know, hard fought for business. So uh, obviously the human connection has been deeply meaningful to me. Um, and then just, I think, seeing people respond so well to the, to the first, to the Sauvignon Blanc was, you know, beyond all of our expectations. We feel so lucky that, you know, that we get to work with um, the Taub family who are so good at what they do and we're willing um, to take our wine on and um, have been such enthusiastic partners. It's meant the world to me. Um, and just, I think, talking to wine merchants and having an opportunity to meet people, um, you know, in relationship to, you know, the wine, it's, it's, I think the human connection is always the, the best part. Um, and that's been lovely. And obviously, you know, it was has been received so well. And we have high hopes for you, young lady. Don't <laughs> disappoint us. <laughs> <laughs> the well, wine industry is, it's about relationships. And, and then of course, yeah. the final project is about, or the final product is about relationships too. It's drinking it with people you love, your friends, your family, yeah. and all of that. Um, which I love. And, and Tim and Rob, I have a feeling after this speech, people are going to want to visit you in New Zealand. So I hope you have, I hope you have visitors. Um, welcome when, when we're, when we're uh, yeah. allowed in, of course. When we're allowed to have visitors. When yeah. we're allowed in. Um, I'm but, first uh, is, in line though, but I'm first yeah, in line. Yes. yes. Do you, have you visited? Have you been to New Zealand yet? I've not been. I'm dying. They know I'm I've dying never been either. Go. I want to go. I'm dying for, for years and years and years yeah. dying to go. I still have like one stuffed animal from New Zealand. That's sort of my token. I hold it out, you know, we're going to get there. You're going to get back yeah. home. You will get yeah. there. You will get there. Um, so another question that came in that people were curious about is if you have any favorite food pairings for either of these wines. Well, I, mean, I would say what's really nice about both these wines is that there aren't, there aren't rules don't really apply. You know, it, 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 it behaves in the way you want it to, but I sort of, I get intimidated by food pairings and the idea of what, is right and wrong because people have different palates and they eat different things and their life demands, you know, or dictates they can't have this, but they can have this. Mm -hmm. This is a very, um, they're hospitable, both of these wines. They, they work with a lot of things. I mean, there's the sort of what you might expect. Um, but we, you know, we cook before all this was going on, we've always cooked and we continue to, and they've, um, they've been very welcome in all of our meals, whether we're having, you know, I mean, we've, had like really nice, you know, pasta and, and, and meats with mm -hmm. this. And we've had, you know, lighter fare, but also I've had a slice of pizza. And yeah. Right. Some Jose. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, yeah, we're, we've, we're having a heat wave here. And so I'm like, yes, this goes well with hot weather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really hot weather. I'm just going to drink these. So, um, very refreshing. And yeah, they have, both have great acidity, which is key for food pairing. So mm -hmm. um, that's perfect. Uh, so my next question that came in from a lot of people, and I know you just launched this rosé like last week, so I realize it's a little bit premature, but if you want to say, oh my goodness, what's next? Will you do a red? Where are you going? What's next? What do you, what's going on? Do you think you're Rob, gonna Tim. maybe creating or are you good with these two? Rob, Tim? Rob, Tim. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think um, from our side, I mean, we want to obviously get this rosé up and yeah. running around, not only in the US, but around the world. Uh, with the launch but you know potentially uh you know something in the red a cabernet sauvignon or maybe the chardonnay that sarah jessica talked about earlier um you never say never right so i think rob you know from your side what are your what are your thoughts yeah well um i kind of like the look of these barrels it'd be nice to um maybe fill them with something with an x on it yes <laughs> yes yeah. Well, it, it does. I'll it do sounds like you know, such a good I'm partnership. Hmm? I'll do whatever I'm told. I'm a sheep, not a shepherd. Well, it sounds like y'all have a really lovely partnership um, with the creativity and the ideas and the respect for, um, you know, what everybody knows, I guess, in the partnership and, and, and can kind of contribute. And it's clearly produced two amazing and delicious wines. So thank you. That thank is you. a very good start. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you all three of you for joining us. Um, and thank you. The story. Thank you. I know uh, we all have a lot kind of going on in all different kinds of ways, um, but we're honored that you chose to speak to us. And um, so just we have so many fans who tuned in, including myself, who thank was you. single in New York from 99 to 2004. <laughs> so you were in my living well, room. I just want to say to everybody that took the time to, you know, to tune in and um, thank you so much for the opportunity. We, you know, we're always excited um, to talk about 
you know, the privilege of producing this wine. I am, I can't speak for Tim and Rob, but I'm always um, grateful for the opportunity. And I thank you. I thank you for having us and um, everybody who tuned in. Thank you guys so much. And thank yes, you for and, the support. And, yes. And for those of you who got to drink the wines, wonderful. I hope you enjoy them. If you didn't, and you are inspired to taste them, which you obviously should be after this. Uh, we still have them available at wine.com. You can buy them as a duo on the site and you can, like I said, dive into even more tasting notes should you should you like that. But um, they are delicious and refreshing and, and they're great for summer um, coming up. So um, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank um, you. Thank you. So, um, I'll talk to yeah, you guys I'm soon, already, Tim and Rob. Be safe. Say. Cheers. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Oh, cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers. 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 Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Thanks for being good. Be everybody. safe, everybody. Be safe. Yeah. Bye. It's both a science and a form of high art. It's made from the combination of grapes, sunlight, rain, soil, and time. It's wrapped up in the moments that matter. It's wine. And we are wine.com. We have the largest wine selection in the world, online sommeliers with free advice, and now our powerful new app puts the entire world of wine in your hands. Wine.com. Seriously passionate about wine. Download our free app today.